Vectors can be added, but they can also be subtracted. So maybe it's important first to talk about a negative vector and what that actually means. Uh, now, negative vector, let's, let's just say I have some sort of vector like, I don't know, b equals, let's say, 2, 0. Well, then what would negative b mean? Or what would that actually look like? I could draw it if I want. So I can actually try to draw this right here. This is something that goes 2 in the x direction. So this is x and this is y. This is a vector that goes 2 in the x direction and 0 in the y direction. So it's this vector right here. It goes like this. That's b. So negative b, um, it should make sense geometrically speaking at least, that it should be something that goes like this. You know, it should be something opposite in direction, right? It points opposite direction. And that's the key thing here. It points in the opposite direction. That's what a negative vector does. So a negative vector points in the opposite direction. That's really important. And so in this case right here, negative b, what we could do, mathematically speaking, is really easy. You just throw a negative in front of it. So, whoops, uh, what I should do then is put a negative in front of the entire thing. So negative 2, 0. And then you can propagate that through. Negative times 2 is just negative 2. And then, of course, negative 0. So this is it. And that should hopefully make sense. That looks like this negative b here. So there's the geometrical there's a geometric looking answer, and here's the mathematical answer. So we could state then that this is negative b here. So if we're going to subtract vectors, <coughs> excuse me, uh, then it might help to actually look at some of the notation that we might use. So let's say I have two other vectors. Let's say I call them v and w, and I want to try to subtract them. So what I can do instead of actually subtracting vectors, what I do is I just add the negative vector. So just like what we just learned to do here, so throwing a negative in front of everything, I can just then say, oh, that's great. That's just v plus negative w. And this is how you subtract vectors. This is how you do it. It's that easy. So maybe we should do some examples. So if we have a is 4, 0, and we have b is 2, 0, we can find a minus b. So we have 4, 0, and we have 2, 0, and we want to try to figure this out. So what we can do, we can say a minus b is the same thing as saying a plus negative b. And that means, let's just write it out. So vector a is just 4, 0. That's no problem. Plus, in this case, I hear negative b. Well, that's just a negative in front of all this stuff, so it becomes negative 2, 0. Well, then I can just add these two numbers. So 4 plus negative 2 is just 2. This is 0. And there we go, there's my answer. So I hope that this right here shows that this is actually pretty easy. There's not really much to it. I mean, we can even, we can even save some time then and just start doing it all in one go. I mean, if you start to get a little bit bored of doing this and adding the negative, it's okay to just cut the corner then, in this case right here, and say, all right, that means if I want r minus q, I'm just going to say it's just 2, negative 1, in this case right here, I'm going to say plus negative 7, negative 5. And that, because I just have to change the sign of each of these. And that means then I go 2 minus 7. Let's see, that's minus 5. And negative 1 minus 5, that's minus 6. And there we go. I'm all done. So <laughs> these are actually that easy. Um, yeah, that's all I have to do. So I, I hope that that... That shows how simple this stuff right here can be. Um, it doesn't have to be super, super complicated. And I th that's what I think I like about this. Now, what I'd like to do is maybe show you another example, this time in 3D. Ooh, but actually it doesn't have to be nearly so hard. You just have to be very, very careful, though. Uh, not because it's 3D, but just because whenever you have negative signs, you have minus minuses. You just got to be careful about those. So in this case right here, A minus B, let's see. How do I deal with that? That's going to be 0, 1, negative 3. Um, if I want, I can even leave it like this. I can say minus. That's a bit dangerous to do. Actually, I'll do it like this. Plus, and I'll just change the sign of all of them. So it's negative 4 plus 1 and negative 1. All right? That's what we're doing. I'm adding negative b. I'm really saying a plus negative b. That's really what I'm doing right here. Right? See, I'm adding the negative vector here.
And because of that, it's still really easy. It's 0 plus negative 4. So 0 minus 4 is negative 4. 1 plus 1 is 2. And negative 3 plus negative 1 is negative 4. So there we go. It's actually surprisingly easy to do this mathematically. Uh, now I think it might help to talk about how to do this geometrically. So what I'd like to do is show you uh, with PHET, this lovely uh, simulation here from University of Colorado. I've got this one about vector addition. What I'd like to do is just show you a couple things. First of all, um, if I want to do a negative vector, let's say this is my one vector. If I want to do a sum, I want to show you something kind of interesting. I want to show you something different. Um, I didn't really have it right here, but what's a plus negative a? I mean, hopefully that'll make sense. It should be zero. Right? It should, should make sense that a minus a is zero. Let's see if that actually works geometrically speaking. Uh, so let's say this is my vector a. If I want to find the vector that's negative a, what I would do is have one that's exactly the opposite direction, but same length. Now I could try to do it with this little program here by sort of guessing. Um, I could try to line them up here and say, whoops, uh, see this is actually difficult to do already. Like this right here. There, I think I've got it. But there's one way to know for sure. Actually, this is kind of fun, is that I can just show the sum and look for a sum that's zero. Remember, uh, I was showing you in an earlier video that this thing right here, what this does to show the sum, that actually shows what it is to add up these two vectors. You know, if I add it up, for example, uh, this a plus this b, let's say, vector, that's what I get here. Well, if I want to find when the two of them are opposite to each other, in other words, when if I have a first vector a, and I want to find my second vector that's negative a, all I have to do, watch carefully, I'm just going to keep spinning this one around and shortening or lengthening it until I see that this green one disappears, because that's when the sum is zero. I'm basically looking for that a plus negative a should give me zero. I'm sort of looking for this case right here. So I'm, what I'm going to do is going to play around with vector, my other vector that I'm hoping to make a, and when the sum is zero, then I know I'm at negative a. I know that I'm there. So let's take a look here. So I'm just going to keep spinning this one around and notice as I get closer, watch this green one here as I move this one around. I'm going to keep moving this one around until the green one is zero. And I hope I can get it to work. Oh, there it is. Oh, I had it. So I hope you can see that there. Whoop. There. So now this vector and this vector are negatives of each other. In other words, if this vector is a, this is negative a. I think that's really important. Because then what I can do then is if I want to have a and negative a, let's just say, I can do something looking at like, what's, what's, uh, let's say I call this vector, this weird one right here, let's say I call this one b. And I can say, what's b minus a? Let's just say I'm curious about that. What's, this is B. Remember, this is B. This is A. And this is my little one I'm going to use later on called negative A. Okay, I'm just going to keep it over here just to the sides. This is B. This is A. So if I want to say B minus A, what do I do? Well, B plus A is easy. Right? B plus A is this. B plus A, and I'd get this vector going up here. But what's B minus A? Well, instead of this one, then I would just throw this one away. If I want b minus a, it's the same thing as saying b plus negative a. That's why I'm going to throw in this vector that represents negative a. So b minus a is this one. And that means the answer to b minus a is actually whatever this vector is here, the one that joins b to the end of minus a. So this right here, this represents b minus a. I don't know if that made any sense to you whatsoever, but geometrically speaking, you can always do this. You can always uh, start with a vector and do something like b minus a. Maybe I should show you just by drawing it. Maybe that's easier. Uh, maybe I draw a vector. Let's say I call it a. Let's say I draw this in here. I call it a here. And then I have another vector, and I call it b. Uh, let's say this one goes like this. Well, then I could take a plus b. And I could actually draw them and I could do it, right? Just like we learned, right? So I could take, if I want a plus b, what do I really do? Well, I can just take a plus b. For example, like this right here, I can put it right here. Put this b right here. There we go. And then I get an answer, right? I get the answer of this is a plus b. 
There we go. Now, what if I want a minus b? What if I want that? That's what I was trying to show you before. Maybe it wasn't very clear. I want a plus negative b. That's what I want to do. So to do that, I would take the same a here. What I'm going to do, I'm maybe just going to move these around so that I can just play with them as needed. These are all the parts that I need. If I want a minus b, I would take a, but I need a vector to represent minus b. I'm not sure if I can actually flip these the right way. Can I actually flip it? I want to flip it left to right, and I want to flip it up and down. That should do it. There we go. So that should be minus b. And if that's the case, then I have to just add those two together, like this. And then I'll get a vector. This is what a plus negative b looks like. It's this vector here that puts them together. So this vector is a plus negative b. That's what this vector right here represents. But just so you know, you can always do subtraction by just drawing them. Just add together. Because see, geometrically speaking, it only makes sense to add vectors. So that's why we're going to add just the negative vector. And that's how we do this geometrically. Of course, mathematically, it's super easy, right? You just change the sign and away you go. And with scalar multiplication, that's actually something that's really, really simple to do with vectors. All we have to do, well, we have to first understand what we mean. So maybe we'll define a general vector like v. Um, I'll call it like v1, v2, and v3. And if I name that generic general uh, vector like this, then I could multiply by a scalar. Remember what a scalar means. A scalar is something with no direction, just magnitude. And we're going to multiply by maybe k. That's usually what's commonly done here. So do you notice my v has the vector symbol on it, but the k doesn't. So k is just a scalar. And what I mean by that, it's just a number. It could be any number. It could be 5, it could be 2, it could be 18.5 billion. It doesn't matter. It's just a number. Just a number. So that's all a scalar is. So then all we have to do then is just learn how to deal with those. And it's really obvious, I hope. It's what you think it should be. It's just k times, well, then all those different things. V was defined as v1, v2, v3. So I'm going to do this. We've been kind of doing this in other videos anyway. Which is then I just multiply this out. So it's k times v1 and k times v2, and k times v3. These are each of these little entries here. And this is what you get. So this is how you deal with scalar multiplication. It's done right here. This is everything you need to know about scalar multiplication. And of course, then we can just do an example, but they're, they're a little bit silly. I mean, it's almost too easy, but let's take a look. Uh, I don't want to insult your intelligence here. Let's, let's actually do it. So if we look at r is 0, 5. If we imagine that, if we actually try to draw that, that is something in the x, y coordinate plane. There's something that goes 0 in the x direction, but plus 5 in the y. So something that's way up here, let's say. That would be plus 5, let's say. That could be r. Well, then what would 2 times r be? I hope it makes sense. If you want to make it twice as big, well, then it should be something like this. Like, you know, twice as tall. And let's see if that really works mathematically. It turns out it's really easy. So 2 times r is just going to be 2 times 0, 5, which is just 2 times 0, which is, uh, whoa, not 2, 0. And 2 times 5, which is just 10. And that should make sense. See, 0, 10. See, it goes out 0 in the x, but 10 up in the y. So I hope that makes sense. That's how we can do scalar multiplication. You can multiply any vector by any number. Just multiply it out. Just sort of carry it through with all of them here. Distribute it all through them. That's it. That's how you do scalar multiplication.